out of the way because I'm not doing it for oh you. Oh my god, no. All right, here yes. we go. You should do like each one. I'm more interested in both. Sucio talk. <laughs> Chef Powerhouse is on the show. I don't give a fuck. We out here in Oakland. <laughs> Celebrating everyone out here. What's up, chefs? Woo! <laughs> you guys are on camera. How's that feel? Okay, aquí estamos. This is the Latin Summit here on Sucio Talk. Latin chefs only. Fuck off everyone else. Uh, let's go around the table, introduce yourselves. I'm sure people out there that listen to the show know you because they're chef fanatics and you guys are royalty. I don't give a fuck what you say. All right, all of you sitting here right, right with me. Who are the guests in the studio? Just shout out real quick. Hello out there. Hello. <laughs> we got some guests in the studio watching along uh, as we record Sucio Talk here. All right. So, Juliana, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Present myself? I'd yeah. rather somebody present myself. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll have Nacho do that since he's the <laughs> love of your life. The love of your life. We'll get, we'll get a little. Nacho, who is she? Who is Juliana? Okay. Juliana, the most incredible person in the world. Oh, okay. So she's Brazilian, chef um, probably 10 years ago. Um, she works in a lot of places, incredible places. Now she's working in this such, new such project. As, such as where? Yeah, such as where? <laughs> such where, has where? where has she worked? Drop the names, bro. <laughs> Let the so, fans out there know, all the little chefs, all the little cooks <laughs> that listen to the show. Okay, so you start probably 10 years ago on Roberta Subrak in Brazil. So she's very known because I think it was the first woman chef making like tasting uh, menus in Brazil. Yeah, tasting menu in Brazil. Uh huh. She was the chef of the president too, so she was very known. <laughs> and then she you went to uh, La Salle. So La Salle, this incredible a place from Rafa Costa Silva. He was a chef on Mugaritz too. Mm -hmm. Like incredible place. And he was incredible too. <laughs> and then you went to Mugaritz. Yes. And that's so where you we, met. That's where we met. Then, yeah. We met in Brazil. Yeah. But in Mugaritz things happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A lot of things happen in Mugaritz. <laughs> that place is infamous. You guys talk about that place very well. Can you like give me one sentence? Mugaritz and one sentence to you. What does it mean? Imposible. Imposible. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, no. Literal. Pueden hablar también en español, olvídate. Esto es sucio talk. Come on. Let's go. Lo que sea. Life changing. Lo posible, lo imposible. That's true. All right, we'll get into your story more because they're like just dropping all these bombshells. Yeah. Oh, she yeah, used yeah. to work here. She used to like, how the fuck did you work there? How, <laughs> como tú te encontraste en esos sitio? You know, you got. I always find that interesting. And then my boy over here, what's up, Andres? <laughs> how you doing, man? I'm good, man. It's I'm been good. a while. It has been a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. Um, uh, wait, am I supposed to introduce myself? No, oh, man. People know who the fuck you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying what's up, man. Okay, fucking okay, snail okay, bar, okay, bro. Okay, okay, snail okay. bar, bitch. <laughs> Out here in Oakland. Uh, I'm surprised. Have good, you had, have you had any, California. like, classic uh, OG Oakland people come through your spot? Like, has E-40 blessed you yet? Has fuck, not yet. Not I yet? Wish. All right, E-40. Yeah, we had Fez pop in. Okay. You know, Fez from yeah. Euphoria. Okay. Like, no, no, who's that? Fucking uh, Agnes, <laughs> Agnes Cloud. Yeah, Agnes Cloud, rest in peace. Um, he, yeah, he came in with his, with his home. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know who you're talking about. I know the homeboy. Uh -huh. Never mind. No, no. Yeah, okay, yeah. goddamn, rest in peace. Came, yeah, I know. He came through. That's some Oakland. Legend. Yeah, that's Oakland. Nobody yeah, that's royalty fucking right there. spoke more positively of Oakland around the world than this motherfucker. This like, guy. Yeah, he, he was, he was the man. He loved Oakland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's legit, man. You've been holding down Oakland for a while now. Dude, I love Oakland. You, you went know, to o the Michelin, first Michelin party in Oakland. How was that? I did. Yeah. <laughs> How was that? That's crazy. I, I mean, bet. honestly, just seeing seeing all these great cooks from all around California, you know, just there. It's like being normal people. Mm -hmm. 
which you know they are they're just people <laughs> right it's just literally like. just people but you know like i i like romanticize cooking you know like mm -hmm. when i was young like i would like look at these cookbooks of like the greats like right. you know like uh, uh fucking grand Aquettes and you know th like read the books of like the french laundry and everything and i was just like seeing these people there was just like wow these people are like literally sitting down waiting to see if they went up or down you know mm -hmm. it's, like, it was it was really cool it's like champagne everywhere caviar and shit just like it was like <laughs> right. it, it was it was sick we had a great time hell yeah, yeah. baby yeah i hope was, that doesn't stop well you know <laughs> like i, I keeps going i have know? a hard uh kind of relationship with it because like i genuinely don't like really want to get a star mm -hmm. because i feel like the dynamic of what the restaurant is would change for people mm -hmm. and for example we got the big gourmand and for me i was like oh shit like at first i was like ah, let's go for the start but then i was like mm. Mm -hmm. like what does that say about us if we're like a one michelin style restaurant you become like only reservation it becomes a bit inaccessible mm -hmm. right um and that's not what the business was about like we were trying to put out the best food we can in a setting that is like unpretentious mm -hmm. and that people can just have that it's not just a destination restaurant that it's a it's a it's a neighborhood spot that anybody can come to and it's chill and people of all walks of life can just sit down and eat some good food right drink some wine when you get inducted into the big gourmand realm of things and does michelin talk to you yeah yeah are no, they in communication we, with you yeah yeah we talk we we talked the whole time that i was like I, since i first got the email about the nomination right yeah and it was just like oh shit. do you get like an agent assigned to you <laughs> pretty much the, okay got you yeah i figured that they're, they're like uh kind of they're very mysterious mm -hmm. like the emails are ex extremely vague and just like you don't really know what's going on right yeah i always wonder how they pick their inspectors yeah, yeah i'm trying to be one of those that's what i'm saying yeah. nobody knows be more out in the open yeah be out in the open dine yeah. everywhere yeah how dine many, everywhere yeah how much money they made that year <laughs> that's true <laughs> They brought That's it very to true. Miami, Nacho yeah. is bitter over there. He's like, <laughs> fuck them. Fuck entire company. You know what? All these years, Michelin guide, this and that, I never bought a Michelin tire. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I never felt compelled to be like, you know, I need a Michelin tire. Yeah. No. So that'd, I don't, be so, that'd be so tacky. I don't think it's working. <laughs> you know? I don't think it's working. So, Nacho, what's up, man? How you doing? Good. Good. It's been a I, fucking long time. Yeah. Probably six years. Yeah. Can we talk about the best restaurant you ever worked at? It's called Sunshine Food Market in oh, Santa Helena, man. California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went there. My bro, my bro was behind the meat counter, and I was like, is that Nacho? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is Nacho doing here? That's a good story. Uh, bro, yeah. Wait, How did wait. you end up working at Sunshine Food Market? So... It's a supermarket. Wait, 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 wait. But I feel like we're missing the very important part. Like, who is Nacho? And that needs to be returned by him. Mm. Because this guy is a fucking legend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Ignacio Susurich, I'll present him. If he doesn't present it himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I prefer you. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, he just had to do it. Let's go. What do you got? So, Nacho grew up in a restaurateur family. So, he grew up in literally running in the kitchen and that was his life since he's a kid he did not want to be a cook he started cooking because one day he had that his dad left for vacation and then the cooks didn't show up and he just had to jump in the line and do service and that's how his dad came to discover that he was in service and he never went out of service since then he's always uh, been in uh, the industry and from then, that's when he went for the first time after working a couple of years at his restaurant in Argentina called Herencia. He went to Brazil, to La Salle, and that's where we met. Um, and from them, from there, he went to Michel Bras in France. So he had a stage there, a little time in Michel Bras. After that, he went to Mugaritz, and that's where we, we met, and we met Andres as well. Whoa. Yeah. I was meeting a young Andres. Oh, he was. Were you bad. guys already there? When, <laughs> he was you, the best in the kitchen. He was so the best. Normally, when you get there, 
<laughs> see Andres working and say, oh, this guy knows. This is the guy. Yeah. This is the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Running around, oh, getting yeah. shit done. <laughs> I I took it I I took it super serious. Yeah, I for was sure. like you know I I I gave it all up to be there, you know like we I really wanted to make sure that I was doing you know that I was doing a good job while I was there. Like I cared a lot. I like go home and I would study mm -hmm. my day, and I was like just really into it. You mm -hmm. know, I, I was at CDP the whole time that I was there, from like literally first designated team i was yeah mm -hmm. it's kind of doing it hell yeah bro did you guys all work with johnny sparrow they did not okay no they uh johnny came uh with my year mm -hmm. um and uh johnny had to leave like i think it was like six months in or something so he had a family emergency mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but um yeah no i love that guy Fuck yeah, you guys got to do a dinner together. We did do a dinner together. <laughs> That's pretty dope, man. Yeah, we did. That was sick, man. He's, uh, I fucking love that guy. He's so funny. You guys are writing history right now. I don't care what no one says. When anything gets done in culinary, you're writing history. Yeah. It's very and true. And it's not even for us. Like, fuck us. Like, it's for the kids. It's yeah. for the people who are interested in it now. Mm -hmm. Who, like, you, you make it possible for them to be like, man, I can, like, own a fucking wine bar where i cook whatever the fuck i want <laughs> i play whatever the fuck music i want mm -hmm. yeah. you know what i mean and that's dope mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's, but it's it's definitely important too to instill upon them that it's important to pay your dues just like you guys did big you facts. guys work for a motherfucking long time big facts i mean i talk about the shit all the time is that like i i really hope that the future of like gastronomy um pays their dues and doesn't just jump the gun and forget about the discipline that is required for you to be able to execute at such a level mm -hmm. you know damn right so we're back back to nacho mm -hmm. that, tell me the story of sunshine god damn it so <laughs> we were working on Meadowood on that time and Meadowood, yeah, yeah that's right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in that time I had no papers to work. So I was there like, like yes and no. Mm -hmm. like, I can be there and no. So then they called it back from Mugaritz and say, hey, you want to come back like probably in two months to work? So we say yes. But between the time that we were working in Merrywood and like going to Mugaritz. I, back to Mugaritz. Yeah, back to Mugaritz. Like, so I say, okay, I have to make money. <laughs> so I have to work. <laughs> so I get to the streets and you, there was you hit this the guy. streets. Yeah, so the, there was this guy who told me, say, hey, I need money, I need to work. So he told me, okay, you can stay here in the street at 7 a.m. in the morning <laughs> and people will come and say hey i need you to clean i don't know i need to clean a house you want to come i don't know ten dollars uh, uh, <laughs> an, an hour, hour. <laughs> so legitimately yeah yeah so, so i spent probably okay two weeks every day going there <laughs> so then the same guy told me hey what you what you know what do you know how, what what do you, what you do in your life yeah I say i'm a cook so normally i cook every day since i uh why you're here yeah, because i need money so you don't okay uh so you can come here in sunshine yeah to work in the kitchen sunshine what? yeah so i went there i start cooking yeah and but you know i was 20 21 years old, yeah. probably, mm -hmm. or oh, 22. But at that time, like your your dream is to be cooking in places like Mugaritz or Merwood. Right, right. And you're every day there, and like incredible things happens. Mm -hmm. But when you go to these places <laughs> where, mm -hmm. no, where people that every day work, you are 
more next to the reality of the life of the people. Mm -hmm. So in that time for me was incredible because I was young. I was trying to work in all these places, yeah. thinking that only food, food and three Michelin stars. But there's people working in kitchen every day that they, they had these incredible histories of life. Mm -hmm. And you say, oh. So in that time I say, oh, I have to be working in a supermarket. <laughs> but there's people that probably don't see her families from two years or yeah. 10 years. Yeah, and, and, they're, and they're doctors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doctors. working and in the kitchen. I'm here, like saying that this is shit when there's like people in the worse worst things. situations. Yeah. So that was like a very good uh, como lección. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, la lección. Yeah. Yeah. God Living damn, life. for my life. Sunshine, yeah. bro. Yeah. Wow. You know, that's why I asked you about it. Because, I mean, <laughs> you know, I knew there's something had to come of that. Yeah. Whether well, a funny story, and I'm happy you learned a lesson. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember I, I always see you and, and every one of you. I say, oh, shit, they're here. So I normally I went to the, uh, to the walking to say, okay, I left. Okay, now I go. I no. Know. <laughs> God damn wow. you know what fuck us you know yeah. like sometimes i look at michelin and sometimes i'm like i'm like sometimes it has to be such a, of a club so you have to believe mm -hmm. that you are the best right and like well, you, just you gotta know what have i'm saying money like you just gotta have enough money to make those changes right i guess i mean we were broke too i mean you're just working at this place that had yeah. and so that's everything we hung on to it you know mm -hmm. it's like fucking but goddamn, sunshine. Yeah, I went there because I forgot to order shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, straight up. Wow. I, no, I, 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 I've yeah. been there. Yeah, you know how it is. Sometimes you just got to do it. Sometimes yeah. you got to, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to get it. Yeah. You got to get it. Yeah, you got to get you're it. You're the guy that forgot. <laughs> they got very good brothers. Yeah, you know? the best. Beautiful. Cardenas Market. <laughs> oh, Cardenas? Pork shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, I love Cardenas. Yeah, dude, it's the shit. We buy, that's where we get our tostadas. No, 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 wait, we get it from Mi Tierra. Mi Tierra. Mi ti shout out Mi Tierra Supermarket in uh, Richmond, California. Okay. <laughs> my sponsor. Dope. They're my sponsor. You guys had now. It's Las Montañas. Order. Las Montañas, perdón. Damn. Something in Spanish. She was yeah. like, una de esas esa cosas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Fuck yeah. laughs> so, what the fuck are you guys doing out here now? You're in California? Where were you? Where have you been? After Meadowood. Yeah, where'd you we go? We went back to Mugari. It's okay. there for three three years. <laughs> just, okay. casual, just casually. Just love it. <laughs> three you, years. Just you guys are like, we extra, love it. Yeah. Extra three years. What is, why do you love it so much? Wow. Like, what is the thing that is just like, you've been to many great restaurants in the world. Why Mugari? Why? Is it the chef? Is it no. the place? Is it the food? No. The... <laughs> it's like something so. that takes like takes it from the inside of you and like mm -hmm. makes make you do stuff that you would never think you would be capable to and like in a nice in a good yeah, way right. like and just believe in whatever and and make it make it true make it happen and mm -hmm. and, and actually like the impossible the impossible that's why the phrase is like marks so much because it's like you would never believe that will be possible until you go through this place and you, until you live this and you to you kind of feel this this philosophy kind mm. of and it's just something that makes you so proud at the point that you don't even care if you're sharing this with anybody that you love or anything or your friends and nobody understands what you're doing and you can't explain what food you're cooking because it's not almost not even food and it's so hard but even though you're so so proud it just makes you feel so good to be there and so like f fulfilling in some way that it's something that it's hard to find in everywhere you after that so you when just you, have to find different scents and it, so you guys point, are chasing the point. magic dragon bro i mean yeah. it's like literally you're like uh it's a it's a studio mm. it's like yeah. the the things that you're working on there are unlike I'm anything Leo. happening in the world i mean yeah. it's it's you're there in this white room you know just everything's immaculate mm -hmm head to toe the place is immaculate 24 7 yeah you know like that's beautiful they run they, they run the most 
that their cleanliness systems there are insane. It's like, insane. you know, you have they've they even cut the cloths for cleaning in a very specific way, and you have to fold it in a very specific way in order to even have it on your station. Mm -hmm. Like you had the, the, the folding techniques, you'd have to. It was like it was so. That place is unlike any other place in the world. Yeah, it's like it's it's truly like I mean we've all been working at many mm -hmm. Michelin star restaurants, you know. Yeah. Um, but the kind of like precision that they had there was unlike any other. I think mm -hmm. to, to be able to execute a dish in seconds is so crazy. Mm -hmm. You have to get everything like over there. They would say it's like like packed, like mm -hmm. so everything portioned. was portioned mm -hmm. in a specific way where it was like heat, fifteen seconds. Put on the thing, whisk the sauce into a little container, go over it. You have your jar with herbs. You tap it; it falls. Mm -hmm. Like in That's seconds, you have four people plating the same yeah. plate. That Sally. never happens anywhere. Yeah, Sally. Right. <laughs> That's it. Goes out, and you're like, "Holy Damn. shit!" Like that was like a whole. Uh -huh. You know, these are these are dishes that are. I mean, it's all it's all works of art. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's like you're watching a collection. You're, you know, watching a, like a whatever, like a runway show. You know, it's all like that expression, that time, that season. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's such a special place. Mm -hmm. Damn. You guys <laughs> yeah. make me want to fucking give everything up and just go there. You should. God, <laughs> fucking just Fuck spend, this. <laughs> spend a year out there. Yeah. <laughs> should be crazy. Yeah. Oh, the, the, yeah. cool, the cool thing about that place is that, you know, they did, uh, we were talking about this earlier today, like, well, because they were, they came to dinner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were talking Amazing about this. Dinner. How was dinner? Yeah. What, you guys, oh <laughs> what did you guys eat? So good. Everything. <laughs> mm, that's usually what happens when you go oh, eat there. Oh, man. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the best. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Proud to have a Latino up here. Yeah. <laughs> and then fucking open I have beans on the menu, dude. I had yeah, all yeah, kinds of good stuff. It's Fun no, but the waffles with vanilla mm -hmm. pizza was incredible. The, the waffles are good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. the, you know, it, it's the the details. So, like, the maple syrup actually came from my friend Shanti. Mm -hmm. who, uh, he, like, yeah, Shanti. He's from, he's, he was, we didn't meet him. Oh. He's from the year, your year, yeah, 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 yeah. the year before us. Yeah, yeah, Shanti. Shanti brought me that Canadian maple syrup. It's, like, real, it tastes like sap. It's, like, mm -hmm. it's, like, not even sweet it's like so fucking good <laughs> but yeah it's like some of that a little like we some like vanilla beans infused into creme fraiche mm -hmm. they like some smoked trout roe and the waffles made with brown butter it's, Incredible. it's, fucking, it's good <laughs> hey bro i'm gonna love me a brown butter <laughs> waffle hey bro you know please. yo have you guys ever had those uh brown butter chocolate chip cookies from whole foods they're pretty good. Yo, them shits are slamming, bro. <laughs> you gotta get yourself some of those. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes I'm like, I eat something and I'm like, let's just quit cooking mm -hmm. today, right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just no, not doing it. You know? <laughs> would there ever be a day? Would you ever quit cooking? And why? Quit cooking. Yeah, would you ever be like, fuck restaurants? What would you do if you weren't doing restaurants? You ever mm -hmm. thought about it? Probably... I will go into like professional wrestling. Numbers. I think definitely. Yeah, numbers. <laughs> he like likes numbers. numbers. I like oh, numbers. really? He really does. Okay. Yeah, like He's like the business guy. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's yeah. legit. <laughs> so probably in, on the business. Is she more the artist? Probably. <laughs> yeah. nah, I think yeah. it's, I think we're just different, but uh, Nacho's our artist too. He's just, he like, but he he's still passionate about knowing how the business works. Like, it, it's beautiful to be an artist and not be o able to have a restaurant going on. I mean, yeah. it's beautiful to like think about all these dishes and all these ingredients and all this service and everything. And if it's all in your dream and you can't make it happen because the numbers are not there, then you You're can't do it. Fucked. You can't make it happen because mm -hmm. he's a reality guy and he's been through it through his whole life because his parents has had, they have had restaurants for his whole life. And yeah. he studied, actually he went to school for, for economy for one year before he went. Yeah, oh, one year. Shit. Yeah. And no, no. I prefer <laughs> <laughs> economy. Economy. everything though. Yeah. 
Wow, that's <laughs> my worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I can't even think of it. Yeah, I, I was like, I'm just gonna cook so I don't have to Bad go choice. to school. <laughs> you know, nope. that's it. Damn. So you guys were at Mugari for three years. Now, why'd you leave? Because of what I'm gonna say. Um, I think it got to a point. I think different motives, both of us. I. Th- I personally was kind of tired of the same thing. It gets to the point like the first year is like a challenge. The second year is like, okay, it depends on me to do stuff and to change stuff. Then you change stuff. Then it's all like all beautiful again. And then the third year is just like all the same again. So you're right. like probably wanting to see different things in the world and understand that it is kind of a bubble and there's so much more. Um, and then pandemic hit. And then we were at home for some time. We went back. We were working like four days a week at the time. And our papers were coming to an end. So we said, okay, let's go get this done and come back Mm. for some, maybe a couple of months. And then during that time, we spent some time in Brazil, spent some time in Argentina, and kind of in the middle of it, decided that maybe we didn't want to go back. Mm -hmm. That we are actually enjoying not being there. Yeah, at the same time, a lot of the people that were working with us, like all her, like the team, probably they will never be back too. Yeah. So in that moment you say, okay, I'm here. Why am I here working? So we have these incredible like people that we were working for three years. Andres was... Uh, one of the guys that is our one of the best friends. And when you are thinking, okay, why am I there? Because of the people. Because the, the place, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But people makes you, like, every day you are there. You're, you know, you're a fact. You're tired. Mm-hmm. But the guy that is next to you are the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> will, yeah, yeah. yeah. this is the same. So, but he will do everything for you. Mm. So you'll be better. So that I think it's one of the best thing that you can take from Ugaritz. That the one that is next to you, it's in the same than you. It's fucked. It's tired, but he will give you whatever that it's inside mm-hmm. of him. To you, to you be better. Mm-hmm. That I think it's one of the most incredible things that in Mugaritz, like we learned that it's like, you know, Marines mm-hmm. that they will say, <laughs> I will die for you. Yeah. Same sensation. Mugaritz, it's more than it's a lot of that. And you normally you will not have that in every kitchen. Yeah. It will be like, you don't be in my line. Get out from here, <laughs> or uh, like at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that's one of the beautiful things that Mugaritz have. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys speak about it so beautifully. You know, yeah. it it means a lot to all of us. Yeah. yeah. I, no, that's I, dope. I, I yeah. I, yeah. It's like brings tears to your eyes. I'm the same way when I talk yeah. about Meadowood and shit. <laughs> you know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we have like fucking family all over the world now. You know, yeah. all of us. Like, How many hours you we are spending all this place? Yeah, and and everybody that was there was from fucking you everywhere, name it, Madagascar, Honduras, yeah, Puerto Rico. You like name it. People were there from every all kinds of levels of experience, mm-hmm. all kinds of age ages. Like it was, mm-hmm. it's, it's fucking crazy. Damn. How long is the season? Nine months. Nine was nine months. months. Yeah. Now it's less. I think it's oh, less really? and less and less. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I uh, did a week. Like one. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the big season. We prepared all year long for this. <laughs> for this week. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I don't know if there's any places left in the world that would close for like so many months. Yeah. So many months for R and D. Yeah. And still, you're like just, even when we're open, you have our day going on. Yeah. yeah you're like, just ordering product. It's crazy. You're just doing things. <laughs> You're like, oh, for this dish, like, I'm going to try it out. It's like, I need, like, 12 sea urchins. <laughs> okay. That, that's <laughs> two, two orders. Yeah. Two orders. Uh-huh. Like, who, the economics of, of, of these places 
Isn't that crazy? I there's just no explanation. Like, mm. a, what's the tasting menu cost there? Now it's cheap. I think it's two seventy five. Yeah. It's cheap. Like for like, dude. Like I heard Alchemist right now is like two k. Mm. What? Two thousand dollars a head to eat at Alchemist. How many courses? I don't know, probably like thirty-seven or some shit. Like, okay, well, I mean, two <laughs> K, bro. That's crazy. That's base. I do it one time. <laughs> a table. That's this will be a K. A K. There just four people <laughs> plus a bottle of wine. <laughs> bro, we'll just go wash dishes after. Yeah. That's almost ten. No problem, grand, bro. For a four top. Yeah. Oh man. The, the who who. Who can go there? Like only nah. there's the one percent. Not cooks. <laughs> it's the one percent, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Uh-huh. Would you ever have a restaurant like that? That could cost that much money if you could. If they came to you right now, and they were like, and "Hey, somebody was like, here's like ten million dollars. Yeah, here's like, the here's, best restaurant yeah, in the world. Literally. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If you didn't like, dive into it, that's a no. I don't man, know. Come on. I mean, it's like, I mean, it'd be fun for like, if it was like, maybe if I did it for like three months. Right. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I just, well, like, it's like a play. <laughs> there's a lot of these like, restaurant tours who always close re- a lot of restaurants. Like, <laughs> like what's his name? Uh, Gordon Ramsay. That motherfucker <laughs> closed like 30 restaurants. Yeah, no. It's, and I'm just like, what, yeah. what happens? <laughs> it's like, the same. It's the same. <laughs> Even, you know, like I, you know, I'm like, this is my, I'm a first time business owner. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I am experiencing a lot of these whys. It's just crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if like things become out of your control, it's like the economy will dictate what you do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like uh, one of my hardest realizations by far has been just like you know when you talk to uh, accounting and you know two plus two equals four and mm-hmm. it's not five you know it's just like it's all it's all there and you're just like oh shit like i have to make drastic decisions in order for this thing to survive another month mm-hmm. you're like like it's like it's crazy so like i can only imagine when the economy fluctuates and you have that many businesses mm-hmm. Imagine what the losses are multiplied by like 30 restaurants, you know? Mm-hmm. That's insane. Mm-hmm. Like one thing's losing 10K in a PL in one month, another thing is multiplying that by 50. Mm-hmm. Where the fuck is that money coming from? You know, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why. That's, that's, that's what I. <laughs> that's what I would think. Dark there that's, what I would, that was, that's what I would think Gordon Renzi, you know? <laughs> Damn it. What, the, what are, you, are you guys. What's your project right now? What are you guys working on? Because I know trabajo is what takes you places. Yeah, you guys don't, it does. If it don't oh make God. dollars, it don't make sense for you guys. You're hustling <laughs> it's out never, here. It's never been about the money. Right. Ever. We made no money. It was, no. It was for free. We, we were free. We, when do we free. ever make money? No, never. We, I never Even have. Even when you're making money, you're not yeah, making literally. money. Even when you're making money, you're not making money. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. Uh-uh. No, like in Brazil, Nacho was staging in Brazil for a year. Then mm-hmm. he went to France. I was a stage. Then Mugais, <laughs> I was a stage. It was like three years with no pay. It's. Que decía tu familia when when all that was going on? Like, was your family like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why are you making money? Yeah. You know, my dad is a chef. Right. Yeah. So he understood. I think he understood. Right. <laughs> I <And> think. <laughs> my mom, she understood. But when she saw the bills, probably no. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, it's like, it's like if you didn't go to school, it's like paying for your school, you know? Yeah. You're going to like the best places to learn. So yeah. Yeah. it's an investment. L- literally. Yeah, in life. No, I mean, like I was telling him, I was like, you know, his resume, like, because Nacho actually like, and maybe you t- did you guys co- co-run like Mugaritz or how did that work or head chef he was he was you, you were a head chef and you were a sous chef yeah he, um jefe partida oh jefe partida and then you were a head chef yeah you know that's such a big accomplishment that even it's like whatever they spent like ultimately to be head chef there yeah you know that's something that it speaks volumes mm-hmm. you know yeah mm-hmm. much more than a big salary yeah, i was just a line cook <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I'll just, just, I'll just start it. I'm gonna let guy. No, <laughs> no. I'm gonna let guy. <laughs> Don't say that. That dish, man. Oh man, that dish was. That dish is like a. I I feel like it's a good definition of what a place like that would do. Mm -hmm. It's like, for example, like you had like, you get the best walnuts in the world. Fucking, you clean these walnuts to their impeccable with a microplane. Mm. You have to grate like let's say like. 1400 grams of mm. walnut <laughs> dusted walnut weights point nothing yeah, nothing yeah. like Don't i wait. my fingertips were fucking all done <laughs> like i can most I, can, I just literally i couldn't even text anymore yeah. cuz my fucking i would <laughs> scratch with one yeah. run out of that one i was like oh fuck that hurt and then i go into the next one then i was just like i couldn't fucking touch anything and it was like this amount of Grated heat like walnut to like some egg yolks that were circulated, and then you would fold that together, season it with some heavy cream, and then like you have a pan like this big, mm. and then you have to make this like perfect omelet, like om like you know, with just like a little spatula. It's like you're and you're cooking on this like <laughs> fucking like uh induction <laughs> like, like stove. Making the tiniest omelet of your life, you know, made from walnut. Yeah. <laughs> and the only thing that matters is that fucking omelet yeah. in it that moment. That. Yeah. It was just that yeah. with like walnut oil and some salt. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Sounds like a fucking amazing dish. <laughs> it, honestly, it was really Oh, you know what? It had the cedrela roja, mm -hmm. which is was like, a, you know, it's a very special herb. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have it tattooed right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's there exactly you go. What it looks. What's it taste like? Uh, honestly, it tastes for me. It tastes like uh, foie gras and caramelized onion. <laughs> mm. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah, there was only one of those plants, I think, at the mm. by the entrance. Mm -hmm. So you need a very little of it. Uh, or you guys just fucking depends <laughs> on how uh, you how you young <laughs> the <laughs> leaf depends on how young the leaf is. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that I that's a dish that would define that kind of place for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. fuck mm -hmm. yeah. Margarita. Are you guys doing any dishes like that now, or your spot right now? No, no. very different. Right, very different. No. Do you wish you were? Do you is it like the food you want to cook? Or are you guys like mm, not? Probably no. Uh huh. No. I don't think so. Like we are cooking every day now. Right. Like sometimes we are. We too. No one else cooking. <laughs> Yeah. But for a hundred. Right. So for a hundred people. Yeah. Omelets. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, no time for <laughs> <laughs> We we no. do we definitely do at Snail Bar. I feel like whenever we do like any guest mm -hmm. sh like homie nights, uh -huh. like I go crazy on people. Uh -huh. You know, like we I don't like <laughs> like there's like we just we just do whatever. You know, like we really try to push ourselves for these dinners. Um and you know it's it's seven well it's like six courses seven courses so it has to be impactful and i think that it has to be creative and i think that it has to be like really delicious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so we we do fuck around with like some techniques of you know but like i think like the level the level of sophistication now in in gastronomy has gone from how much can i do to like how effective can I be and how can I put out something that is like sophisticated, thoughtful, new, delicious, fresh, like just like more, you know, more so than just like, this is like 15 techniques with a tomato, mm -hmm. you know, 1996 El Bui, you know. Mm -hmm. What is a tomato? There's no tomato. <laughs> no more. It was, all, no a, more it was all a strawberry, but we, we named it a tomato it. dish. <laughs> yeah. It was never. It's over. It never the people it figured it out. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> What's the food cost on Why that? Why does tomato taste like <laughs> strawberry? But you know, crazy. But yeah, I think uh, I, I'm so excited to see the generation of like cooks from my era, like to see all of their projects. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm genuinely like very like i love going to see friends projects mm -hmm. it's like one of my favorite things ever like my i went to i just did a dinner with my friend giuseppe mm -hmm. who owns this place called fugas in mexico city 
if you're going to Mexico City, oh, shit. go to okay. Fugaz. <laughs> is the best restaurant in Mexico. Okay. Um, yeah, just seeing like, you know, a Colombian guy uh -huh. that fell in love with a girl. She went to Mexico and he followed her. Classic and story. He opened up. <laughs> he just opened this spot up and mm. it's like so cool. Uh, he's just like, you know, it's like literally it's a table, a two door fridge and another table with like a twin, three induction burners. That's it. You know, it's like the smallest fucking place you can imagine right it was literally like i would say it's like a 400 square feet mm -hmm. um with like a tiny little stair that is like the place where they cook that's damn it. yeah people doing it with a little bit nowadays right. i mean you guys saw it today you know uh -huh. <laughs> like we're you know right. like a panini a panini press and like two induction burners and uh little fires in little here oven. No, that's it. Do you grill outside <laughs> at all? Uh, we like if we if we're gonna do something outside. I mean, we did it once. It didn't really work yeah. that well. What's up with that neighbor? <laughs> What's up with that? He fucking hates me, man. Is he still there? <laughs> he hates me. Is man. he still live there? Still lives there. He still lives there. Yep. He refused to leave. He refused to leave. So it's either you or him. It's me. <laughs> do you ever you, you ever think you'll leave that spot for a uh, different spot in Oakland? No, I I I, I don't. Mm. I I'm I'm trying to stay there for as long as I can. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, if I don't yeah, I don't really want to go anywhere else. Right. I, I don't want, Why I don't would want you? I don't want to move out of that space while I'm while I'm here cooking mm -hmm. in Oakland, no. Mm -hmm. You get the best of both worlds. You know, would you ever go back to uh, Florida? No, I think I think I, I want to move. I want to move to either um, Marseille or Auvergne mm. in, in France. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm probably going to do that as soon as my lease is up. OK, me and, me and my partner Joel are talking about moving out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just went to this place called Hobosh in Mexico. Mm. It's a it's an island off the coast of Cancun. Uh huh. Bro. That shit was magic. <laughs> yeah, for real, bro. I'm telling you, I've been talking about this shit for since I've been oh back. Gosh. I've been like, damn, take me back. So the whole place is not rock. It's just all soft sand. Uh. So when the tide comes up, the entire island floods. And the way to get around is these dune buggy taxis that they got. Or you walk on the beach. And like, I'm telling you, I didn't put on shoes for the whole time I was there. Oh, man. You know, it what was just stuff. Oh, uh, no, we were, <laughs> we were we were we were staring at a spot, you know, but it was it was legit. So if you ever get a chance, go to Hobosh, man. I'm telling you. And they're building a whole Hobosh? A Hobosh, yeah. Hobosh. Uh L H O L B O X. Mm -hmm. Oh. Like Hobox. <laughs> <laughs> but, Floods just like Gurnville. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Just like Gurnville. Yeah. Probably sister cities. Who knows? <laughs> so, we Gern haven't been there through the floods yeah. yet, but everybody talks about it all the time. The floods of Gurnville? Yeah. Like how it's going to look like. Yeah. You when does that happen? The local saloon? No. You, you guys should have a flood party. Yeah. Like flood dinners. Everything is like dinner. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> flood dinner. Yeah. Flood like dinner. In the water. Hey. Oh, man. Why not? All the houses are like lifted. You, everybody. Oh. Because you're right next to the Russian River. So you're prepared. Yeah, everybody's prepared for that. Yeah. So the what's the name of this place that you guys are at? Let's keep so it. So the name is the Lodge at Don Ranch. Uh-huh. So like it's a resort. Like they have like a hundred years, mm -hmm. the place. So now it's owned by uh by a new owner. Mm -hmm. So we open on May. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was made. Of so since year? we opened, we are working on the restaurant. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, how did he find you? Long story too. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got, we got time. <laughs> yeah. We got time. So we, when we came back from Spain, we spent some time in Brazil, and mm -hmm. then we went to Argentina to open this restaurant for a friend. He was open. He's the guy that has the only fine dining in Cordoba. But he was opening his casual restaurant in a big place. He wanted some help. 
he called Nacho's dad. He said, I know these guys are coming for vacation, but can I steal them to open this restaurant? <laughs> he said, yes. So we went and helped him uh, for six months. And after that, we went and spent like two years working with the family business. So mm-hmm. in Herencia, where Nacho grew up, and the other uh, two restaurants that they have in Golf Curses. And then um, at this point, we were like looking for something different. We were thinking about leaving Argentina and almost went to Thailand. Mm. Almost. Uh, but for then this sh- for to open a restaurant yeah. in Thailand. Oh, shit. Yeah. And we're kind of excited because we haven't been to Asia and we wanted to like spend some time there. But actually, it was good to come back to California because it was also a place that we really liked at right. when we went when we lived here. And so there's this chef, Fernando Troca, that had had a program, uh, like a, a restaurant with the same owners in New York. Yeah. And they were looking for somebody for to open this place. Mm. So he said, oh, I know these, I know these chefs there in Argentina, um, but uh, they will never come if the kitchen looks like this. So you better change oh, everything fuck. before. <laughs> so they kind of changed a couple of things yeah. and renewed the place and the cabins and the restaurant and everything. And then he said, well, I have this place you guys want to come and see. And we we're kind of, we're already like ready to leave yeah. Argentina. So it was like kind of the same timing. And that's when we came here in the beginning of now, 2023. Okay, dope. And so what's the plan? You guys are going to stay here? Yeah. See this out? Yeah, for some time, yes. Like forever? <laughs> forever is a hard I word. I don't know for forever, but for the next. For the foreseeable future? Yeah. Got it. Build this yeah, spot. Like here. Yeah. yeah. Cali, yeah, it's a good Cali's, spot. Cali's the best. Yeah. Honestly, it is, man. The best America's got. <laughs> People, exactly. If I you mean, ain't going to live here. Like, live you in live Spain. in New York, but New York is like six months cold right now. <laughs> like, you know, Miami's too hot. So, you know, you move to California. Yeah. That's true. We got the, we got the best this fucking weather. This guy is watching here. He's all quiet. But he also worked at Mugaritz with us. Oh, he did. How yeah. do how do you know him? He's front of house, and he's now wine director at Eight Tables in San Francisco. Oh, yeah, he's wine in the director. same world. He's super young too. Yeah, he like almost t- blinded the wine that I yeah took to the table today. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay. So, how do you guys know him? How do we know you? He worked at Mugaritz. Yeah, well, oh, right. Mugaritz. He just told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, bro. Dude, hey, what are you gonna say? It's been a long day. <laughs> and over there at open ai you know i'm doing my shit over there open ai yeah i took the chef job over there where at open ai like the chat gpt people ah. i have no idea what that is yeah that, that's right <laughs> <laughs> it's like Artificial it, it's intelligence. like yeah it's like the new google in san francisco you work at an ai fuck yeah <laughs> directed for chefs like in okay. this er- in are your era? employees ai no no i hope i hope they are no problems right <laughs> uh, chef i can't come to work i'm fucking none of that shit <laughs> <laughs> none of that shit let's go yeah no yeah it was a, a weird thing i was opening a restaurant you guys know that no, had, a little bit of i it. had to bounce mm-hmm. i had to Herc. bounce people were dirt bags you know mm. gente mala. Mm. So me fui, and then on the way over the bridge, I called my boy, and he was like, "Hey, they're offering me this job over here at this spot." And I was like, "What is it?" He's like, "Oh, this place." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> so I've been at Google all week, training. Yeah, wow, crazy. Yo, they, they got a DeLorean meeting room at Google. Oh wow! Yeah, like a DeLorean. It's fucking sick. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I've just been in this whole tech world. And by the way, I'm hiring an executive chef. Oh, yeah. If I know someone. If you know someone, yeah. 120 120 smackers, you know what I'm saying? And that's it, baby. Let's go. I'm building a world-class team here. Who you you thought it was? Who you thought it was? Who you thought it was? I might know. I might know a guy. Yeah, let's go. Hmm. For real. That's a real thing. (laughs) <laughs> sometimes i don't believe it <laughs> i look in the mirror i'm like come on <laughs> but then i'm like hey Shit. you know what i mean came with credentials out here uh-huh. so whatever i bet no matter someone out there is getting an offer yeah, yeah. somebody yeah send them my way All it's right. uh you know a different ball game but 
it's a game that I'm interested in learning how to play because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's different than anything I've ever done. Right? Yeah, we're like, oh, how do you make money in food? Like, okay. Yeah, there you go. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it always. Uh, we live in. I always love hotels, like big, big hotels, and that shit. That shit makes me like very crazy. I want to do that. You want you like doing? Yeah, that. I want to do like at the end of my life when I'm like an old old chef. That's where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be at some fucking whatever the Ritz Carlton at 2050, <laughs> all old and just like fucking, you know, <laughs> like still on the line, but everything doesn't come out on time. <laughs> so I'm like upset, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you got your own printer. Yeah, exactly. Everybody <laughs> <is> <laughs> like digitally. <laughs> yeah, everybody is like, it's like he still reads his own tickets. <laughs> You know? It's crazy about like artificial intelligence. Like, there's nothing. I mean, there's little things here and there in the cooking world, and mm-hmm. like robots that do coffee and art yeah. latte and stuff like that. But like in the creative sense, like, why isn't it? Why has nobody yet like done something that you just say, okay, I have this. I have this ingredient. I have this material. I have this time. What can I do with this? Chef, that is exactly what the people that I work for do. <laughs> there is a program. Oh, man. It's called Sous Chef. It's on really? Chat GPT 4. I can say, I got onions. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Charcoal, I need a, I need a dish. 30 minutes. Yeah. No fucking boom. way. And they'll write you a whole and recipe. The, oh, my God. Straight up. What kind of shit, like? Dude, it's... Right here. <laughs> oh wait! Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Check it out, check and you're it out. thinking on, about ideas of doing stuff. Um, it's like every yeah, everything's gonna be done by it's itself. It's crazy. Sous chef. So this is literally the company that I work for. What? Um, sous chef. So ChatGPT is and it was like AI I have, animated answers. I have onions, chicken. What else? What else? What else? All right. Uh, eggplant. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. That's difficult. It's a hard word. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what's I, the longest word I can I give you? I fucking spelled the shit out of that. Let's go. I spelled it correctly. Okay. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. 30 minutes. I'm curious. Here's some of the food you learn. The ingredients you have. He already knows the food. Where are you cooking it? <laughs> Let's see. Wait, so this is crazy. <laughs> like all these uh like, yo, live I, shows, you I know. Up my boy <laughs> Ah delightful selection <laughs> of ingredients. <laughs> How about a pomegranate glazed chicken with sauteed eggplant? It's a dish that balances the sweetness of pomegranate with the savory depth of chicken, complemented by the earthy notes of eggplant. Here's a brief sketch of the recipe. <laughs> Pomegranate glazed chicken. Saute chicken pieces in a pan until golden. In a bowl, mix pomegranate juice, a hint of garlic, a touch of vinegar, and a whisper of honey and a sugar for a glaze. This should say a whisper of honey. Pour the glaze glaze over the chicken and simmer until it thickens. Oh, okay. Holy shit. Damn. And straight up, yeah. Would you like a detailed recipe or shall we proceed to creating a grocery list based on these ingredients? Imagine like people start doing dishes like this <laughs> and get a star. Is it a star they for... Will. Yeah, they, they will. Yeah, they will. It's going to happen. So isn't yeah. that what Bad Buddy just did in one of his albums? He made an AI-generated song. I think it's called Monaco. <gasps> I saw something. Yeah, like I think Monaco is an AI-generated song. That's so crazy. And there was like a lot of uh, back and forth about it because people were like, I don't know, like, are you even a fucking... Person? Like, I don't, like, I don't know, is that... <laughs> Chef who owns wine. Chef who owns wine shop in Oakland. It's gonna draw me a picture of this right now. No fucking way, bro. Yeah, check that. Look, it's creating the images. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is the crazy shit that's happening right now in the world. <laughs> like the people are going. This is like Google was in two thousand. Like people are going crazy. Wait, what? Mm. This is an invented image. It doesn't exist. Straight up, no, it doesn't exist. This is just, yeah. This is just what they do. But, yo, doesn't that look like you, though? A little bit? A little bit? Come on. That's crazy.
crazy. Yeah. Right? That's crazy. So yeah, so that's ChatGPT right there. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. So they basically were a startup and Elon Musk started the company with a couple other dudes or whatever. And then Microsoft like invested and now they're worth 90 billion. 90 billion. So yeah. It was started by Elon Musk. Uh, yeah, Elon Musk and a couple other other heads. And then now, yeah, we're about to do this shit. And I was like, I was like, you guys want a world class motherfucking dining in here? Wow. Like, are you are you sure? Uh -huh. That's what I'm gonna do. That's crazy. Yeah. So you're that guy now. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker's an AI chef now. Straight up, bro. That's crazy. Straight up. Yo, congrats, man. That's yeah. Massive. No, it's yeah, it's fucking it's cool. It's different. I feel like no, I'm, hey, whatever. <laughs> I, I can't say that because you know I feel like for the last year I've been like I'm opening a restaurant, I'm over here, and then yeah. it's like doesn't uh -huh. work out, uh -huh. and I'm like what the fuck, Dios, like you know, like <laughs> testing me, you know, and so now I'm like I'm good. I take the ferry to work. What? Fucking yeah, man. Every that morning so I'm on beautiful. the ferry like. Mm -hmm. Fucking calm and shit. To music. Wind in my hair, yeah. Listen to music, listen to podcasts, yeah. make posts, you know, like whatever. It's dope. I'm living that dope life right now. Fuck you know? Yeah. I'm coming into dinner now because. You are? Yeah, your boy's getting paid now, baby. I'm oh, coming shit. in. Oh, man. That's why I could do this type kind of shit, you know? Yeah. It's like, that's yeah. what I said. I was like, I'm going to do this job and I'm going to do this fucking show. Get Fuck, this, take this shit yes. to the next level. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, dude, literally text me when are you coming? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do it. I'm going to come in your spot too. I don't give a fuck. How do you come? Do I got to stay there? Or yeah, what how do I? How do, come yeah, how do we come? Is it, I can come in for dinner. Yeah. And yeah. you guys are cooking yep. your food. Yeah. Now from Thursday to Sunday because it's winter. Oh, mm -hmm. Thursday? Yeah. Ooh, Thursday I could do a Thursday. Oh, that's not I, bad. Could do a, I could do a Thursday. Let's go. I'll okay. come up there and stay in the cabin. Yeah. Check out yeah. Gurnville. Oh, yeah. Gurnville is pretty dope. It's got that Joe, little. About to take it's got that boot this store. Thursday, can we go There's this Thursday? Shop. Are you guys there, open this Thursday? Yeah. Gurnville? Another store. <laughs> oh, we're coming. We're coming through. Let's go. <laughs> we're coming through. Coming through. <laughs> it's done. Let's it's go. Done. We're coming to Gurnville. <laughs> it's done. What made you guys come down tonight? Just to have dinner. Have dinner. Oh, yeah. yeah. First time. Oh man. Oh, shout out Snow Bar. Uh, yeah. That's why. Oh. <laughs> Worth a special detour? Eh? Eh? Huh? Eh. Huh? To, uh, huh? Yeah, Michelin. Yeah, baby. <laughs> hey, if you get it, don't give it back, baby. Just take that shit. Yeah. I'm going to give that shit back. Yeah. No, don't. I'm going to give it back. At least, for, at least keep it for like a six months. <laughs> nah. Just give it, you know what I'm I saying? Just like it. one night. Yeah, one night. I sleep with it on the pillow, and then you know, a just couple, throw I think, it out like a cheap I, whore. I think like Jesus. three days later, we throw it out like a cheap whore. Oh my god! Yeah, get out of here. I, I just ah, fucked it. It's literally like almost like my worst nightmare to become a place so like people don't think that it's like accessible. Right. Mm -hmm. Like everyone, like even now, people are like, "Oh, it's expensive. Oh, it's so expensive." I'm like. Dude, Wait, it is, pay. but I'm like, it is what it is. Like, you gotta it's pay like, people, man. Bro, right now, a fucking oyster wholesale is like a dollar and fifty cents, mm -hmm. and we're supposed to live on like under a thirty percent markup. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, or like, it's like, what, what the fuck? Like, are we supposed to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh, well, twelve dollars now costs this, and you just put it on the menu because that's like, even like the minimum which you can sell these things for. Mm -hmm. And people still complain. They're like, it's so expensive. And I'm like, maybe maybe don't go out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you can't afford it. Yeah. I, I well, it's just Damn. it is what it is. Hey, it's whatever, man. Same shit with wine. Like we like we we're you know, we we're a bottle shop and also a wine bar. Uh -huh. And you know, the percentage that we mark up our shit is like 0.7. You know, it's like well, it's like 1.7 markup, which is like, it's a wine shop. Mm. You know, it's literally like, you know, you guys had some amazing wines tonight. Mm -hmm. Those wines, I should have charged you guys like $2,000 just in wine. I mean, it's 2016, they had, they, they had, you know, some 2016 Bistro Taj from Charles Dufour. They had some mm -hmm. Ganevat Negociant, like Chardonnay, sorry, it was Gamay, Gamay and Chardonnay. 
They had some seven in from 2016 from Francois Rosette Martin. They had amazing wines. Damn. Just pulling out all the stuff. Well, you got to Mugari's family. Yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> yeah, gang we talked over about here. you guys during lineup. Everybody knew who you were. <laughs> yeah. It means a lot. It means a lot that, you know, you guys would come. I genuinely think you guys are like amazing cooks and I think you guys are the future. <laughs> We're going to get your boy on here. I know. Yeah, on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, you know, I, I mean it. I think you guys are, like, I remember watching, for example, Natural one time, like, just make a loaf of bread casually. Mm. You know, it's like, I was like, I'm going to, like, I'm, I'm going to eat some bread and butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's already, the bread's already there. I, there's a baguette on the table. Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, I'm like a fresh loaf. It's like, <laughs> you know, he'd been at the house for like a couple of days. It's like, yeah. It was just like already had, it was just like, it's just like in him, mm -hmm. you know, to be, to like be a cook, cook's cook, even like at home when, when his downtime just like picks up and just like, phew, so you know, you have fires a fire on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's a fire outside and he's like running back and forth making like the stock for the heads and everything. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, you know, it's like um, some people just have this instinct, mm -hmm. you know, to just like, yeah, to just, just do it 24-7, you know. The hospitality bone, baby. She yeah. never sleeps. You know, he, yeah. yeah, I would say like definitely Nacho was somebody that came in and I was just like, oh shit, like some good kids coming through <laughs> well because you know i mean you guys this year i feel like there was you know there was strong people like you and you know was, oh my god uh, you know but there was some people <laughs> was a, but there was like i feel like a lot of new young blood and i was like oh shit i don't know where this i don't know where this shit's going uh -huh. like the people like the new generation of cooks mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know it's, i'm a little scared mm. do you what do you think happened why do you think they changed so much you think I mean, it's pandemic? I know. I, I just think mm. generally I feel like people are a lot more emotionally intelligent mm. and aware of these things because ultimately, like, it's not, they're not bad things, mm -hmm. you know, to be aware of your time and your value and be respected and that's all good actually <laughs> it's all, it's yeah. all like, that's it's good what things. it should be right it's all great things like you know yeah. to be acknowledged and respected yeah. it's just like it all sounds like uh oh, that's so good you know <laughs> but you know i feel like our generation and even before us a lot of this old school kung fu like like teachings and technique was kind of held where like you know it's like i'm sure like whoever margella's like like even just in fashion for example like i'm sure margella's teacher was like not, not nice to him mm -hmm. and ex demanded a lot and was mean and like kind of ruthless mm -hmm. which you know it's like you face that like fight or flight moment where mm -hmm. you're like do i fucking give up or do i fucking overcome and achieve and then you know mm -hmm. you're the great you know, and like, I feel like if people are not challenged to that, like, level, maybe you'll never find that moment, mm -hmm. you know? Right. So uh, I think what you're saying, and I, I agree, we should have places still, restaurants still like that. It's a thin line. You know? It, it's a fucking, it's uh pfft. You know, we were talking about this, like, uh, earlier at dinner, but that, like, you know, we we would leave, we would work literally from, like, 8 a.m. to, like, 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One day off. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, I've, and it was a full day, you know, you had get two meals and you get a little break in between to yeah. maybe take a nap. Sometimes, yeah, 10 Sometimes, minutes nap. <laughs> 10 minute nap. Um, but sometimes after service, fuck a lot of times after service, you have to go outside and then deep clean every like ninth pan or metal for like container an hour for like mm -hmm. an hour. At least <laughs> it could be in the rain. It could be fucking shit cold outside and you're uh -huh. out there after a full day. Uh -huh. It's like doing this shit, uh -huh. cleaning, just cleaning, cleaning a grill. 
at night just like what the fuck that is going happen on happen anymore <laughs> that kind of shit doesn't happen anymore and you know there but the thing is like you know it's like there there's these things that made us stronger mm-hmm. uh but in that moment you're like fuck mm-hmm. this sucks but nowadays, like, n- none of these kids can be put through shit like that. Like, there's no way. What? You're, you're like, so canceled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're canceled and, like, you know, nobody's even trying to achieve shit like that no. these days. So, like, I don't know. It's uh, So I'm like, you know, what, what, what is the future going to be like? What are these kids? Mm-hmm. What, 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 what is the future of gastronomy look like if mm-hmm. people are not being? There's no discipline. If there's no discipline. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, you can't have consequences anymore. There's no consequences. There's no consequences. You yeah. can't you can't really reprehend someone mm-hmm. like uh maybe people used to reprehend us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that it was a good thing, but even Not though that it was a good thing. Even though it's like just very different. Very different now. Yeah. And how to not reproduce also like what everything that we learned, how to you know that it works because you can get things working and you can get the best out of people and you can get like the strong people out of it. Mm-hmm. But how do you get the strong people out of it without being that way? And how to make people like move fast? How do you make people like react? How do you make people understand without all that? I mean, I'm still like, like with kindness. It's hard. It's yeah. not. It's yeah. very hard because hard, you have yeah. it inside because you've been through it. But who hasn't? How do they have the reaction? How do they do without having the experience? I, for example, like when. I opened Snail, like, I had to really, it's, nobody teaches you how to have a management style, Mm -hmm. you know, it's something that, like, I just try to be, I just try to be myself Mm 24-7, you know, I, I'm like a, I've always been serious in the kitchen, like, I, cause I, cause I, cause I'm doing a lot, you know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to like focus, you know, so everybody kind of knows that like in the kitchen, you know, that like I take it serious. So I feel like leading by that example of like it meaning a lot to you is kind of how I lead that kitchen mm-hmm. where like I make everyone make sure that they're proud of the things that they're making. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, I make sure that they know that, integrity is so important in our workplace because things are so simple that it's like they're either right or they're wrong you know Mm -hmm. like and i think that that's the way that i try to teach ultimately i feel like sometimes i you know they when when i when i'm mad they feel disappointed you know but i i i'm glad they do because they that's a lesson Mm -hmm. because like you know you should you should know by now like through teachings you know that we've been working on that like you know that this is too thick or this is too thin or this is too raw or this is too cooked mm-hmm. or whatever the case is mm-hmm. you know but i don't and and i am managing talking speaking of managing styles like i rather have tough conversations with people one-on-one and away from everybody mm-hmm. i right. like to demeanor demean anyone in front of anybody, in front of anybody because i feel like a probably just go on automatic defense mode, you know, and then B it's just it's just not nice to do. Mm-hmm. I I rather just have a upfront, honest conversation about things that are bugging me and I just like snap randomly on the whole fucking thing and just scream and shit. Like mm-hmm. I just go crazy. <laughs> you know? Which is what we've seen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Through all of our careers. Yeah. You know. Yeah. People just go fucking ballistic. It just still happens. I did a. <laughs> Everybody. Well, you know, we were thought that that was the way. Yeah, yeah. I did a, a temp job on a on a cruise ship out here in San Francisco mm-hmm. Bay, and this dude's name was Emmanuel, and he opened every Planet Hollywood on Earth. What? He was like the chef of Planet Hollywood. He's just like, I open every Planet Hollywood. <laughs> I'm like, all right. He's like yelling at motherfuckers in there. And we're like off the coast of of San Francisco, just on this like cruise ship, like doing this banquet. And he was fu- he didn't give a fuck. I was I was like, damn, this is like old school. He's like, throwing, <laughs> he's like throwing boxes of produce on the table. He's like, cut the carrots, and when you're done, cut the radishes. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I kind of liked it, 
you know? That was how <laughs> sick it was. You know what I mean? I was like, damn, this is kind of cool. Crazy. But then I was like talking to the lady next to me, and she's like, yeah, I'm a school teacher from Honduras. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, oh, no, let me tell you how to, let me show you how to cut, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy out here, man. Mm-hmm. I hear you use one of my knives. Yeah, exactly. yeah, no, for real. They're I like, they're like with the temp knives, like <laughs> they're gonna cut themselves, man. Uh, like this lady doesn't know. She's teaching second graders last week. <laughs> so it would be, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I like the, how you how you phrase that. Like, how do you uh, get the best out of someone without fear, basically, right? Because like, that's what, like what you're what your motivator is yeah what your motivator is yeah uh i don't know the answer to be honest with you and i think that it's it's weird like working in different scenarios too because like fine dining is one thing and then you go to casual restaurants like another expectation i feel like giving people a sense of purpose it's what can link the the two you know which right. is just going through your going through working because everybody has to work it's just how mm-hmm. our society is and you know if you're going to work if somebody makes you feel like what you're doing has purpose i feel like that's everything mm-hmm. very true i mean i also think it's part on the employees part too you know what i mean like they they gotta wanna because also i feel like you have some employees that are like make me feel good like, ma- yes. like I came in in a bad mood. Like, make me happy today. Fifty fifty. Like, hey, chef, you didn't teach me anything today. <laughs> like, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah, at the same <laughs> like, time, there's people that they expect that you will be there every day saying, "Hoy, Andres." made the incredible one <laughs> <laughs> nobody tells me that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, people are expecting that. And there's time that if you're not doing a good we're job, we're not going to say anything. Yelling to you, but I will not tell you that. Like, and that's a, a part too. Like, will not happen. Yeah, you're right. You gotta accept that some shit is just not good. If it's not good, it's not good. I don't know what to tell you. You know. Also, if you're doing the same menu like for two weeks in a row, like, come on. Party was like, hey, okay, yeah, we get it. There's no new innovation that's going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're, like, looking for it. Yeah. But it's different. Like, your kitchen is different from these restaurants out here. They're scared to innovate. <laughs> they will not innovate. Yeah. We got to Snail Bar, and no. um, so she comes to the table, the girl that uh, got us in. Oh, Devin, yeah. Yeah, Devin. Uh-huh. And she's like, oh, so the menu is here because uh, we change it a lot, sometimes in the middle of service. So this is the best <laughs> way we have. Like, instead of printing menus, we just have a Código QR. A little QR code. Yeah. Because we can update it. In the middle of service. the whole night. <laughs> Bro, that's the, that's the best yeah, way that's to be. The best. Perfect. Yeah. That's the well, best. We could be, at first, it was like no menu. Then it was like, uh, oh, we're going to start printing menus with this nice paper and shit. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, yeah. Pop, 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 pop. Bro, we c- I come up with dishes on the fly sometimes if I have to. I'm <laughs> like, there was crazy nights where we're like oh, fucking selling out of everything. And I'm like, fuck, it's like 7.30. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, fuck, like, what do we have? Uh, some mm-hmm. anchovies, some potatoes, like a <laughs> little cupy, you know, right. boom, boom. And you just go, you just make it up. There you go. You know, we had to. Next, you know, you got 15 more orders or something. You sell it like 18 bucks or some mm. shit. Like, yeah. It's money. <laughs> Gone. Let's go, baby. That's, you know, yeah. So it was like, uh, that's the best we could do. Because mm-hmm. we, we have a print, we have a chalkboard. So we like move shit around mm-hmm. there. But every table coming in at once, like, I mean, it's like the worst shit is like when you read a paper, you like, let's say the waiter, waiter comes in, she's like, oh, here's a menu. Cool, cool, cool. You like, everybody's talking about the table. You're like, I'm going to have a steak. I'm going to have a steak. Oh, fuck mm-hmm. She comes by. Yeah, can I have to get the stick? Ah, you're not having the stick anymore. You're like, ah, yeah, fuck, man. Yeah, you're already like. Ah, I already started. I, like, not, we, yeah, I already started not, not good. good. You know, it's like, <laughs> it fucking took me 15 minutes to decide on this fucking. Yeah. <laughs> if I want to eat meat. <laughs> you know? yeah. And like, yeah, it's, it, it sucks. It's a bad feeling. It's unprofessional. I hear it that. Happens, it happens to me at nice restaurants with their fucking wine menus. I'm like, yeah. come on, guys. You hear me out there? Mm-hmm. Fucking got three stars. 
<laughs> take the wines off your list if they're sold out. Right. Yeah. That shit probably cost them so much to reprint. <laughs> <laughs> reprint the Bible. Dude, the reprint homework. the fucking yeah. You gotta. That, that's how it be. Just those keep track places, of your man. Inventory. You know, that's all I'm saying. You know? Right. Like, to, that, you know how long it takes to choose a bottle of wine? That happens like if, a if, lot. If you, if you know what yeah. you're looking at, and you're like got a Bible in front of you, and it fucking takes you thirty minutes to choose a bottle, <laughs> you know, and you're like, ah, that one. We don't have that one. Like, I, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, try I'll again. I see, you. see you're already like mid. Yeah, like, they're like for your sixth course. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking man, yeah. come on. That's funny. <laughs> Damn, mm-hmm. roasting the three stars out here, huh? I'm not, I'm just not roasting. I'm just saying, you know, check yourself. Yeah, yeah. You got to. <laughs> you got to. Sometimes though, it's like the same sommelier in the same place for like twenty years. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, I can't. I can't imagine. There's a lot of. Of people that are always like forward moving and thinking, you know, that only happens at some restaurants. Oh yeah, I mean, my my quote unquote some, aka Carlos, he's our you know he's our beverage director and mm-hmm. you know our GM. And I feel he, I feel like his wine program right now is really really incredible. Mm-hmm. Like you guys, I feel like saw a little bit of it today, you know. But it's like whichever at this point, like the amount of wine that we have accumulated through this past year is like it's really be taking shape to be just like yeah a truly incredible calf mm-hmm. like we're launching actually like tomorrow like a online website mm-hmm. like where people can now get the kinds of wines that we sell at the restaurant just like shipped mm-hmm. to their door That's so fun. damn yeah. so like a wine club we already have a, we've had a wine club since we opened mm-hmm. but it's more of a wine shop online mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're launching our online wine shop tomorrow. What is the logistics of that, like shipping wine? And sh- do you guys Fuck, take care of I any mean, of the shipping? Literally, like one of the people sitting in this room right now created created to. the whole website, created Did the it. whole mastermind of the whole thing. Everything, every illustration, every photograph, every description, every taste note, the the drawing to each tasting note, like the, literally the shipping logistics of it, taxes, weight, like. Ver, like sh- did she fucking did it all shout out jewel damn shout out jewel <laughs> literally how long did that take the you goat, the goat like three months three months <laughs> damn like working, like yeah mm-hmm. and we're like we need it by monday yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every monday every monday we need it by monday <laughs> no nah, she hit the deadline she yeah mm-hmm. that's dope yeah it takes it it takes a team karate we launching tomorrow mm-hmm yeah and what's the what's hey now you guys can get snail bar wine where you live what's oh. the website literally Horseville. well it's just snail bar uh shop.snailbar.com shop.snailbar.com yeah. oh i think if you just go to snail bar like if you just go to the snail bar website you could just direct yourself to the shop Yes. No, you can't. <laughs> Boom. So let's get it right. What are we what are we doing here? Shop dot Snail Bar Oakland. Shop dot Snail Bar Oakland dot com. Boom. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you gotta know. We wanna buy wine. I wanna yeah. buy wine. Shop I don't, Bar I don't like com. shopping no more. I don't go out shopping. Yeah. No, but uh we'll have it linked into our regular website too, mm-hmm. where there'll be a shop section and it will redirect you to the main shop. Right. Snail bar. After she worked for three long months, she's jotting in her notebook. She's like, need to do this tomorrow. <laughs> she's like, must direct original website to shop. Yeah. Right, exactly. The whole double, shop has gone down because we, <laughs> we changed it. it yeah, uh, it, it, was really, it was really cool to watch uh, her work and be in, um, like, watching her, Carlos, and, you know, Tiffany, who designed the, the website. Mm-hmm. Who's Jules' friend? Um, works for Apple. Um, just watching them work and put that whole thing together was sick. Mm-hmm. That's tight. Mm-hmm. It takes a family for yeah. restaurants, you know. It's yeah. a whole team behind it. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be able to ship yeah. like uh, around the United States too. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, just international to... or no? No, not just in the U.S. Is that next? I mean, we don't know what the. I I gotta call it. ABC and find out. Okay. <laughs> Heard, that. Heard that. So in terms of the wine list, um, like, you know, for, for the most part, 
all the restaurants in a certain part of town or in the city, they're all going to get from the same reps, right? So how do you make your wine list different? Do you have special partnerships with some of your reps? Are you like reaching out to, to owners of the wineries themselves? Like, you know, we like me and Carlos have definitely have special relationships with all of our reps. You know, we we're homies with them all. Um, but we're first and foremost consumers. Mm -hmm. You know, we like, we've been drinking wine for so long that we know, we know exactly the patterns of certain producers, you know, we know how to read like, you know, like if it was a cold vintage, if it was a hot vintage, what is, what, what, how's the wine tasting, you know, cause a lot of shit we buy and like, we know this wine is not ready, but in two years it will be really beautiful. So we'll store it aside. Um, we buy, you know, we bring in some shit ourselves. Like, you know, if we're going on a trip, if I'm going on a trip, I'll bring in some cool stuff mm -hmm. to be able to just sell it to homies and, right. you know, we'll some black market shit here and there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we get the bag. Keep it interesting, <laughs> baby. Keep it interesting. Yeah, people can come in. And yeah, they they really like. I mean, sky's the limit. Like, if you want a bottle of Jack Solos, like mm -hmm. we got you. Speaking of that, I, I meant to ask you about uh, the slug location. Are you guys? I know you guys I did a first first. I'm done. No more, not that, in that, that building that, at all. That, no, that, you guys that, did a party for first did, Friday. That was so lit. That was so yeah. crazy. Uh, That's why I was like, they might be doing events over there. No, it's like I, I, I can, but it, it it's it's a lot of responsibility, and I would have to hire somebody to like just do that and. It's it's complicated. It's complicated. Mm -hmm. I it just I just like at the end of the day, I'd rather just focus on snail. Right. Yeah. Do you think that at some point when you first opened snail, you were like, "All right, let's fucking do another restaurant," and then after doing another restaurant, you're like, "Eh." Yeah. No, for sure. I think that after you know the first the second restaurant, I wasn't even trying to do that. Mm -hmm. I was like, it, the opportunity just kind of came. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I, I couldn't say no, uh, but then for sure, while I had it, even just at the early stages, I was like, fuck, I don't know if having two is to move. I just like. It's a lot, man. If I'm not there. Somebody has to be. It's like, right. It's really tough. You feel guilty all the time. I, I did feel guilty. Yeah. I, I felt like, you know, like people were coming to have an experience curated by me and mm -hmm. I wasn't there to provide that and. I I genuinely don't I don't really know if it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, if people people do it, but it's like how many times do you go to some of these places and you're disappointed by what you experience? You know, like I I don't know how people can have that many restaurants. I really don't. Right. I I like I see it. You know, I know like people like Alain Ducasse have multiple three Michelin star restaurants. Right. You know, people, that's just crazy. That's insane. Building Insane a team maybe. and trusting and making right. sure that they're going to do the job for as good or better than you, like when you're not there. You know, for beautiful. generations. Yeah, it's incredible. For generations. It takes like, yeah, Crazy. that takes like. That dude's on a whole other level. Whole yeah. family's got to work for you in order for that to happen. <laughs> He's, that dude's just on a whole other level. Yeah. You know, to have a, a, a group, <laughs> you know, to like that big, uh -huh. just like of three right. stars. Mm hmm two stars one stars is crazy and there's that and then there's the michael mina way where you can just fucking Cash just throw back. your name everywhere yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just open the shit who cares yeah. what it is what's going on over fuck. there it's just like yeah. i mean yeah somebody knocks on your door with a bag and yeah. yeah yeah i mean shit if i was him i'd take it too you know <laughs> fuck it like it's not, somebody will run it i mean this, find a sous chef. it's 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 tough i don't know it's like i i personally like I don't. I don't think I would say yeah. Mm. Like if somebody knocked on my door tomorrow, I was like, "Hey, here's fucking five million. Like, mm -hmm. you know, let's just open up two hundred restaurants with their name on it." I would say no. Right. I just like like money, money, money like that. It's like it doesn't like like I'm not. I don't want it to define who I am. Right. You know, like I rather just do what I'm doing. And be proud of that. Mm -hmm. Then live some fake ass life where everyone goes to my restaurants and they're all garbage. Mm -hmm. And I like live in this fake reality surrounded by material things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Fuck that. <laughs> Have you found that, that people in the community are 
fake friendly to you because you are Andres from Snail Bar? Because I know that that shit happened. It used to happen in Costa all the time. Yeah. Only, thought, yeah, I know. So I'd a only imagine. Per, I mean, a thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. Yeah, it's fucking definitely <laughs> weird. It's a small town. Yeah, it is a small town. <laughs> I don't even know, though, man. I don't spend time over here like that. Like, where are you at when you're not at Snail Bar? Like, where, you, where are you going out? <laughs> where are you at in, in Oakland? Honestly, like, I'm either at, like, Ordinaire... Mm -hmm. Just like casually drinking wine in the afternoon. You find me in the corner with Joel smoking weed and drawing on her notebook or There you go. Or we're or or we're like eating sushi or mm. Donde? Mujiri. Oh. Okay. The best. Most affordable omakase meal you can have. Okay. Period. Hmm. Like He knows like, the spots. I mean fucking you could get like a twenty eight dollar combo. All Sukiji, all, all like Sukiji market fish quality, mm -hmm. like eight pieces and then like a little uh, maki, mm -hmm. like six pieces of maki. It's so good <laughs> and it's so simple. And you just like that's it, twenty seven bucks. Like shit that you would have had to pay hundreds of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Oakland sometimes has Mexico City vibes. <laughs> just a little bit of it. I mean, over here, bro, the tacos over here. I don't even know the name of half these fucking places. I just. <laughs> I see them and I go. I still think like the best tacos in the East Bay are El Paisa at dot com. Ah, uh, yeah, that that's, that place is good. It's fucking. There's good. also another and, place like, called Ultimo Paisa. Also. Yeah, that's not, not bad. That's not the one. That, I know. That's I went there bad. and they were like, "No, this isn't the one." I was like, "Imagine." <laughs> ima <laughs> I was like, "Imagine working at a spot and then that's your job, being like, oh yeah, no, we're not the spot. We're not the. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're not the. We're not so the." One. I'm like, "Once you there. find out what the fuck they're doing down there, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> well, fuck. Thank you guys for coming on the show." Yeah, dude. Thank Appreciate it. So fun to catch up and Last hear minute. what you're all up to. Last minute. Old friends. Yeah. No plan. No. No plan. Never have a plan. No. <laughs> Number one rule to having fun. Yeah, literally. Mm -hmm. The best things <laughs> in my life have happened because I had no plan. <laughs> That's yeah. the best. All the there fucking you time. You're laying on your feet, especially if you cook. <laughs> you know? You'll be all right. That's yeah, fun. exactly. <laughs> like, Learn you know, how to cook and you can live anywhere. Yeah. yeah. If you think about it, like you think about your guys' years at Mugaritz, but then think about all the people that went to eat there and the memories they still have of eating there when you worked there. I, I have people, and I've like, met people like that. Like yeah. That, that had, were, have pictures of them eating there while I was mm -hmm. there. And I was like, what the fuck? And they're like, oh yeah, is that you? And you're like, damn, that is me. But how the fuck? Like in the corner Crazy, and shit? You're like, yeah. yeah. It's happened for sure. It's weird. For sure. Such a coincidence. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there who are like fanatics of. But this then you know we live in a. Out. It's a small. It's a small gastronomical world. You know. A yeah. Lot of people love dining and mm -hmm. they go to all the places. Yeah, you went to Noma. You said right. Recently? I did go to Noma. How was that? What like was it? The first time you've been there. It was the first time I've been. Was there. it like everything that you ever thought it was? Was it like how they say? Yes, and also no. Okay. <laughs> yes, like, it is such a special place. Mm -hmm. Nobody, like, the experience they provide is so unique. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're welcomed by the staff. Mm -hmm. The room is warm. The colors are perfect. Like, the mm -hmm. the the theme of the room is always, like, very... Like, it, it's everything so consciously done, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there, there's a story behind everything there. Like, whether when, when we arrived, you know, like, the first thing at the table was, like, a, a pheasant covered in salt and just, like, the head sticking out. And it's just, like, a thing there. Mm -hmm. And it's also really, like, a very interesting topic of conversation because you're like, what the fuck is that? You know, it's chicken. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> first thing that landed at the table was a meat course. And we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, that's nobody does that. No. You know? Mm -hmm. And it was a slice of the breast and then a slice of the thigh with this like hazelnut milk. Mm. With that had some like I don't know what I think it might have been spruce oil. Mm -hmm. 
It's like dip that, you know, you like eat it. Yeah. And it was so good. But there were some dishes that I was like, it's just straight up nasty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know about this one. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. A little, little far fetched. And maybe, honestly, just the organic matter of mm-hmm. something so natural, fermentation, or whatever. Just like me. Right. Just like, but, like, best dish I had that night was this custard made from, like, um, like roasted onion mm-hmm. with like a canal in the middle that was like this like sunflower like raw cream thing and then just like individually clean sunflower perfectly like all around it yeah. sitting on this like sunflower yeah. plate <laughs> it was so good mm-hmm. just texturally what that dish was i was just like fuck mm-hmm. so you know having those kind of moments to me make it worth it like that dish was so next level, and then also they had this like thinly wrapped omelet, just barely skin, but it filled with brain, right. like deer brain, mm-hmm. and it was just like the most elegantly. It looked like a sheet of like like paper. It was like like yeah. it was, yeah, but it was just this perfect like baguette looking like omelet. But like I, I'll show you a picture. Damn, that's <laughs> dope. Yeah, filled with filled with uh, deer brain and the, yeah, it was like a deer hanging in the middle of the kitchen and yeah. shit. It was like, it it it's it's fucking sick. Now that I like yeah. think back, I'm like, damn, that's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I I definitely recommend anyone in the world that if they if you get an opportunity or a ticket to mm. like, go, you go, you fucking go, go. You, you fucking go. Yeah, you know. Uh, so yeah, shout out Renee and the whole team. That was quite an experience and i highly recommend anyone goes whether you like the food or not i feel like that's mm-hmm. what makes it interesting yeah mm-hmm. you know fuck yeah shout out mm-hmm. kenneth foon mm-hmm. my boy i'll come see you soon do a podcast <laughs> thank you chefs i appreciate it thank you, thank you. yeah thank for you. sure i'll come nice see you guys you at your yeah. resort yeah nice to see you fuck yeah come check out your food i'll come check out your spot you as well. You're due for a visit. Uh, Susio, Susio Talk, Talk podcast. Fucking get take care, fucking everyone. <laughs> we love you. Yeah, get your Susio Talk merch. Fucking nowhere, dog. Get it's exclusive. Exclusivo. <laughs> pa que lo sepa. Okay, let's go. <laughs> hmm. Wow. <laughs> God wow, damn. we did it. <laughs> oh, that was crazy. Yeah. Have you been talking about coming here a long time ago? No. Um, no. <laughs> no, that literally <laughs> like literally two weeks ago. Like yeah. Last week. It was just a coincidence. Yeah. This is all a coincidence. 